Hello and welcome to another episode of Topicality. Once again, I'm Nissan. I'm Antonius Brown. And today we are talking about the beautiful, the illustrious cancel culture. <laughs> and why are we talking about it? Because it is, is infecting everyone. A new person every day is being canceled. Uh, Daniel Caesar, Ariana Grande, if you can think of them, I'm sure that they have been canceled or someone near you really wants to cancel them. Yeah, so there was actually last night when we were doing research for the show, Nishan was on a uh, New York Times mm -hmm. website yeah. where you can type something in and then press cancel and you have canceled it. So it's a new thing and it's uh, affecting people and let's see how, let's di dive into it, talk about what it actually is. Right after this commercial break, we'll go for some current events and then dive right into cancel culture. Traditions are not made overnight. They are created through a legacy of excellence and a commitment to something much greater. For more than 135 years, Prairie View A&M University has provided students with a strong academic foundation, a unique college experience, and the opportunity to make their mark on the world. This is a place where friendships are formed, discoveries are made, and dreams are realized. This is Prairie View A&M University. Our tradition, your opportunity. with some current events for you. Yeah, so first thing today, uh, a little s sad news. Uh, mm -hmm. Nipsey Hussle, the rapper uh, out of California, uh, died yesterday as a result of a shooting. Um, Nipsey is one of the, one of the most uh, realest rappers out there. There's a clip of him when he was younger talking about how he doesn't want to buy jewelry. He wants to buy uh, real estate to invest in the community. You know, mm -hmm. So he was really one of the guys who believed that um, the best way to help the community was to invest in the community, invest in assets that don't depreciate, like chains and cars, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's crazy, you know, one of the realists out there, Nipsey Hussle, is dead. But for some reason, George Zimmerman is still walking around. I'll let you decide on what that means. And up next, uh, Trump uh, uh, proposes to shut down the border wall. Propose is a really bold term, more like he keeps tweeting and talking about it, which is really kind of worrying. Yeah, so he wants to shut down the border between the United States and Mexico. He wants to make it to where uh, you can't go in between the two. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to go to Mexico for Cancun, uh, it's going to be a lot harder of a trip. Uh, and then that will shut down all, uh, all um, trade going between the two also. So it's a really bad idea. Uh, but, you know, when Trump doesn't get what Trump wants, uh, Trump throws a, chan a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Joe Biden has been accused of touching a woman inappropriately, uh, saying that Joe Biden went behind a woman, get, gave a good sniff of her hair, and then longingly kissed the back of her forehead. Um, this woman was Lucy Flores, and she reports that she was humiliated and mortified. He planted a big, slow kiss on the back of my head, and my brain could not process, process what was happening. She was shocked. Flores, uh, on a phone interview with CNN on Friday night, said she decided to come forward because she felt like Joe Biden's public interactions with women had not been properly scrutinized. Joe Biden responded by saying, in my years of the campaign trial and in public life, I have offered countless handshakes, hugs, and expressions of affection, support, and comfort. And not once, never did I believe I acted inappropriately. And if it is suggested that I did, so that I did so, I will listen respect respectfully, but it's never my intention. So apparently Joe Biden's been accused of doing this. I will say that this is weird and strange behavior. Yes. You shouldn't uh, go behind a woman, take a deep sniff of the back of her head, and then kiss it. Yeah, it feels as if uh, Joe Biden, um, maybe a, it seems as Joe Biden has always uh, had issues of um, acting weird mm -hmm. uh, with women. Um, it doesn't seem to be like a sexual harassment type of deal. Like he was mm -hmm. actually trying to do it sexually, more as if like it was like a uh, fatherly, grandfatherly type of deal. Yeah. But uh, you know, um, I've always heard that you know, um, if the if the person, if the victim feels it feels it is in a certain way, yeah. then that's the way it is. You know, mm -hmm. so um, your intentions don't really matter, right? So what yeah. actually how the person feels about it, how is how they, is how you should address the situation. And so I think uh, Joe Biden's response, you know, um, was was. Uh, was adequate in my in my eyes, but if you look at anybody else on the campaign trail, there are people, and then Bernie Sanders uh, 
campaign uh, that has been said that were uh, accused of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Kamala Harris in the uh, Gil Gilda Branch uh, campaign, mm -hmm. too, is also using said sexual harassment. So this is a, f a fervent issue. Uh, it's, a, it's a prevalent issue. And hopefully we can, we can uh, address it and uh, fix what we're doing, you know, so they can change their actions. Yeah, and I can understand how Lucy Flores feels because if an older man, because this is a pretty young woman, uh, came up behind me and sniffed my hair, I would feel uncomfortable and mortified. But does this mean that uh, Joe Biden is canceled? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I think we should, we can, um, we can address his faults. Yeah. Um, and still move forward by uh, ad holding him accountable and then mm -hmm. asking him to change. And then, because uh, there's other people, like there's a picture of him with uh, Ash Carter, who was once a Secretary uh, of the Defense, uh, his wife. But Ash Carter's wife says, because uh, uh, Joe Biden's hands are on her shoulders and he's mm -hmm. standing behind her. But Ash Carter's wife says that uh, she did not feel uh, humiliated in that, in that situation, that she thought there was nothing wrong with it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's different ways that different women feel in these, these uh, situations, you know? So I think one thing we can't do is we can't. Um, put on women mm -hmm. the idea that this is a sexual harassment deal. You know, maybe if they feel it is so, they should tell us. You know, if they don't, then, then we shouldn't uh, make, we shouldn't say it for them. And then we should ask Joe, you know, hey, in the future, can you- uh, Don't sniff women. Yeah, can you not sniff women? <laughs> can you not like kiss them like that? Uh, you know, and if Joe refuses to change his behavior, then we can talk about canceling him. You know, mm -hmm. I, think, I think first we gotta give people time to change their behavior mm -hmm. and then move forward. Um, and next we're going to be talking about the Brexit a little bit because uh, contrary to popular, popular belief, this does also affect Americans. Yeah, so uh, Brexit, um, to basically kind of put it shortly, um, let's imagine Texas withdrew from the United States and then every time you wanted to go uh, ham it up in New Orleans, you had to cross a hard border, right? So like uh, if you want to send, uh, if you want to have some of Amazon sent from Louisiana to Texas, you had to pay a bunch of taxes on it. It was a really hard thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. That's what Britain wants to do with the EU. Uh, but the reason why this is important is because Theresa May, one of the most powerful women in Europe, uh, was leading the Brexit charge. And uh, yesterday, uh, she basically put her job on the line uh, so they could pass a deal to get out of Brexit, uh, to Brexit um, safe, uh, safely and then more easily, right? Uh, and then everyone said they were gonna vote for her, vote for her deal, and then they reneged, uh, <laughs> and then decided not to vote for her. So Theresa May is in a very, hard situation. I think it's really important when we talk about, you know, last month was Women's Month. Uh, we see women, the most powerful women in Europe are losing position to power. Uh, Merkel in, uh, jo in uh, Germany uh, has stepped down from power. She's not going to seek re-election. And Theresa May's job is really uh, in trouble here, you know. So how do we um, deal with women in power um, losing their jobs uh, uh, time and time again, you know, and then in the public saying that we don't support you, you know, we feel you're robotic, you're not likable, and they're just trying to do their jobs. Saying a woman is robotic has always been incredibly problematic because if she's too emotional, then everyone talks about how she's too emotional, whatever right. that means. And you know, Kavanaugh can go and cry on stand, but a moment uh, a woman tries to like really express herself, there's a problem. And the moment she doesn't express that fully, she's a robot. Yeah, it's a, it's a double standard, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a serious issue. Uh, and the reason why it affects you, you know, if you're a student here at Privy and University, uh, is because uh, if uh, Brexit does not leave the EU correctly, it can cause uh, economic turmoil. And when the, because all the world economies are connected together, that can affect your ability to get a job or your ability to, to get your things uh, in, a, in a correct manner, in a timely manner, or you may get to pay uh, outrageous prices to get things from, you know, Europe. Mm -hmm. So this is why it affects you, you know, on your doorstep. But also, we want to see women succeed, you know? Always. Yes. After this commercial break, we were, are going to go right into cancel culture. Is it good? Is it bad? Do we love it? All the questions. <laughs> Prairie View a and University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View a and University. Our tradition, your opportunity. And 
we are back talking about cancel culture. Well, first, before we can really talk about it, we need to understand what cancel culture is. And according to uh, the New York, New, York, New York Times, cancel culture is the act of withdrawal from someone whose expression, whether political, artistic, or otherwise, is unwelcome or at least not tolerated. It's like a cultural boycott, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, when we talk about the definition of cancel culture, there's mm -hmm. also uh, when you choose to no longer support that person monetarily, mm -hmm. uh, you choose not to uh, pay for their music or pay for their or uh, signal boost them, yeah, signal boost them, boost them, or you know, or like um, pay for the movies, things like yeah. that, you know. Or if you're gonna still still gonna watch the movies, you're gonna you know still offer one or two people movies, you yeah. know, instead of actually going to the movie theater and um, uh, contributing to their paycheck, right? And you're also not gonna boost their movie, tell all your friends like, oh, you love this movie, go watch it. You're gonna watch it illegally and never talk about it again. <laughs> again. Yeah. So. Uh, the criteria for cancel for canceling somebody, right? So, um, most of the time, is an act that we see as being um, outrageous, right? So, yeah. uh, cancel culture. I mean, when we look look at it, it kind of started on Black Twitter and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it, a gay Twitter, right? Yeah. You know, so those communities together um, uh, intersected, and they kind of created the idea of what cancel culture is. Um, and then it's also kind of found in the Me Too movement too, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the Me Too movement, uh, when people um, when people did things they had no business doing. Um, then they were canceled, you know, in Black Twitter. Also, you know, I checked that. I think it's really important that for someone to be actually canceled, I think Black Twitter and Gay Twitter really have to start the movement for it, because mm -hmm. uh, if White Twitter does it by themselves, it doesn't really happen. It you doesn't know. really stick. Yeah, it doesn't and really stick. In my opinion, there's a clear divide between what is cancel culture and what is the Me Too movement, because some of these people that are getting canceled didn't they didn't do the same thing that the gravity of people that were uh, involved in the Me Too movement did. Uh, people that have been, Daniel Caesar was, can was canceled a week ago, but he did not do some of the things that Harvey Weinstein did. Right, uh, and also important, I think, um, when we talk about cancel culture, right, so we talk about uh, the, the ideal of uh, who decides, right, uh, and then like yeah. uh, um, what, what length, how many times can they mess up before we decide they're completely canceled? You know, how many times can they um, be wrong before we decide they're canceled? So, you know, we told some of the best case scenarios. You know, R. Kelly yeah. is like one of the first ones yeah. um, with his. Uh, if you're still bumping R. Kelly, I need you to stop. <laughs> uh, with his, uh, with his uh, documentary on HBO, right? When he talks about the heinous things he did, uh, and they, they canceled him because uh, I think it's really important because our generation doesn't really listen to R. Kelly like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been a minute since R. Kelly had an album that came out and was platinum, right? So it was easier for our, for our culture to cancel him because he wasn't really in our cereal box like that. It wasn't in our ear. Uh, he was older, you know, so if you talk to an older generation, you know, mm -hmm. maybe someone like uh, my older cousins, you know, or like my parents uh, who grew up with R. Kelly in the 90s, right? I may be a little bit harder for them to say R. Kelly is canceled. It may be harder for them to say that I don't want to listen, no longer want to listen to R. Kelly uh, because of them, they grew up with him. They may not have, they have a, a more um, idealistic view of him than we do, you know. Growing up, I always knew R. Kelly was kind of weird, you know, and therefore when it finally came out in the documentary, I was like, oh yeah, so we're not doing that anymore. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah, confirmed, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, for the younger generation, Logan Paul is a wonderful example of someone being canceled for a great reason. If you guys don't know or have been hiding under a rock for a very long time, uh, Logan Paul recorded a dead body hanging in a suicide forest, well, the suicide forest in Japan. And not only is that a sacred place, it's also filming a dead body. So, uh, no, <laughs> you cannot do that and expect us to still continue and support you. And that is only the tip of the iceberg for Logan Paul and the wild things that he has done. Yeah, and it's also important to realize that Logan Paul was never like a hard hitter in like the, um, in the, in the content industry, right? Yeah. Logan Paul was a was a was a, 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 a viner as they call it, you know, and then also had a YouTube channel. We put out some YouTube clips here and there, and he was on a couple like B-list movies, you know. Mm -hmm. But he was never really a hard hitter. A really Disney star. Yeah, he was like a Disney star, right? Mm -hmm. So he was never really a hard hitter. So it was more easy for him to get canceled once he messed up because mm -hmm. he didn't have that big of a footprint. So therefore, erasing his footprint was not that hard. But Logan Paul is still out there, and he's and people still watch his videos, and he still has millions of followers. And just so you know, if you didn't, every time that you click on one of Logan Paul's videos, you are giving that man another dollar. So please keep that in mind. Yeah, and then one of the best case scenarios also is like Kevin Spacey, right? Yeah. Uh, Kevin Spacey, um, you know, objectively is a good actor. Uh, objectively, mm -hmm. right? So he was in uh, American Beauty, uh, mm -hmm. and then he was also in 
Um, he was also in this house, house, house of cards, mm -hmm. uh, seven. Um, there's also an, another movie, um, I'm forgetting what Baby Driver. Yeah, Baby Driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was a very good actor. Um, and then um, his movies were critically acclaimed, but it came out that he was uh, uh, molesting uh, young boys uh, at parties and also raping them. And then um, when that came out, he decided to come out the closet oh yeah, as being uh, gay, which was, uh, you know, wrong on so many different levels. Yeah, yeah <laughs> missing the point completely. Yeah. And then perpetuates a stereotype that uh, gay men are also more likely to be pedophiles, right? Yeah, predators. Uh, uh, and predators. So therefore, uh, Kevin Spacey got canceled, mm -hmm. you know. But let's also remember that Kevin Spacey, you know, his footprint had kind of diminished, right? Um, he, the last time Kevin, you know, House of Cards was a big hit. Mm -hmm. That's more Netflix. That's more of a, um, a really politics-heavy show, you know. So I don't think Black Twitter was really standing Kevin Spacey yeah. before all this came out, uh, especially uh, not uh, uh, gay Twitter. So therefore, yeah. when it came out that he was doing some wild stuff, they were like, oh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I'm cool with that. You can get rid of him, right? Um, and, and also keep in mind, all these people that we've listed so far, they have lost money, they have lost job opportunities, they have truly been canceled, and not just by society, they've been canceled by television shows. Kevin Spacey was taken off of House of Cards, and if you guys have never watched it, he was the starring role. This man had died and came back, and all that in House of Cards, but uh, they took him off the air. Yeah, and it's important because House of Cards was Netflix flagship um, first uh, original content show, right? It was their first break into the game yeah, to first win. Game of Thrones. Yeah, to win Emmys, and uh, they won Emmys for the show, um, and it was a big deal. And so, therefore, the fact that they was willing to fire Kevin Spacey mm -hmm. was important. But also, that show also had a strong uh, f a woman character, and then she took over the show after Kevin Spacey left. You know, and that was really important. That was a show of success. You know, mm -hmm. so those people like um, uh, the the uh, the uh, anchor from uh, uh, CBS News oh, this morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, he got canceled, you know, because uh, he was doing wild stuff, like having a uh, lock of women into his into his room, you know. Uh, so like those type of people never really were stand by Black Twitter, and I think that's a really important, um, a really important um, criteria when we talk about mm -hmm. who gets canceled, you know. Um, because the next question is, can you be too popular to be canceled? I, without a doubt, one hundred percent, yes. Uh, Leaving Neverland came out pretty recently, and it show it depicted some things that I will not say because it was heinous and deplorable. But uh, not only did uh, Black Twitter and Black Americans completely reject the film, not even watch it, just glance at it and dismiss. Uh, his music is still going to be bumping. Not like that's a bad thing entirely, but no one's even having the conversation. Uh, should we think more critically about this? Should we even, I don't know, you can't cancel a dead person, mm -hmm. but uh, should we really analyze what's happening? I feel like a big issue with cancel culture is that we put these celebrities on such a high, high pedestal, and when they do something uh, that uh, what the people we've listed have done deplorable things, mm -hmm. but if they do something that's even not politically correct or not entirely up to societal norms, they're immediately held to a standard that we wouldn't even hold ourselves to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like Michael Jackson is a icon in the black community, mm -hmm. right? Um, his music is played at every uh, cookout, barbecue, family celebration, right? Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's still gonna be bumping to remember the time, you know? Yeah. Um, and that makes him almost too popular to be canceled, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, black Twitter, and because we, our generation grew up with the jokes about Michael Jackson um, doing some wild stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We kind of already knew, you know? So when the, when the documentary came out, most people kind of ignored it because they're like, I don't want to watch it. You know, yeah. it was just an idea that I don't want to see uh, someone I, I cherish like this in this light, you know? So therefore, I'm not going to watch it anymore, you know? So therefore, um, Michael Jackson, I mean, did he get canceled? I don't think so, yeah. you know? I think people are just going to have serious conversations about him, mm -hmm. you know? But Bill Cosby was also like him, you know? Mm -hmm. But Bill Cosby got canceled. You know? I don't know about that because I know so many people that are still standing Bill Cosby. They're like, oh, it was back in the day. I, I have met people on this very campus <laughs> in love with Bill Cosby. Yeah, I think, I think stupid people are going to do stupid things, uh, you know. Um, so I think there are going to be some people who are going to be held out, held out on it. You'll see arguments that Bill Cosby, you know, the, why is a black man being targeted, right? But once 50, men, 50 plus women come forward, uh, I'll have a problem with that. Yeah. And I think, you know, definitely, you know, but also Bill Cosby's older. Mm -hmm. um, most of us did not grow up watching the Cosby show. It was off air by the time we were born, um, you know. So therefore, I think most of us, there was a disconnect from Bill Cosby, you know. Little Bill was something we probably watched. But yeah, besides, definitely watched Little 
besides that, you know, when we when Joe Cobb's to come into our TVs every day, you know, mm -hmm. it took a minute for my parents to really um, cancel Bill Cosby because they were like, you know, I grew up with him. He was, you know, he was uh, considered to be a father figure, you know. Mm -hmm. So now I really have to think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think our generation, you know, I think it's moving more towards, you know, not really uh, hyping Bill Cosby like that, mm -hmm. you know. You may not hear him in the same vein as like Larry Wood, more other icons mm -hmm. of, you know, television and, and, and movies, right. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. right. So like uh, Kevin Hart uh, got canceled, um, well, he got canceled, I'll put it in quotation marks, because mm -hmm. uh, he was supposed to host Academy Awards. But then some old tweets came up. I don't want to say for like 2008. 2011, 2011, I 2011 yeah. Uh, and one of the, 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 the tweets, uh, I'll kind of paraphrase it. You can kind of read it. Uh, basically saying that his son came home and played with his daughter's uh, his daughter's dollhouse that he would uh, hit him over the head with it and said they were gay. You know. Um, and these are definitely uh, things. Very 2011. Yeah, very objectively wrong things to say, right? Um, but Kevin Hart has since apologized for these, right? Mm -hmm. So he apologized, um, you know, very recently beforehand about this, you mm -hmm. know, before it came back up, he was uh, slated to host Academy Awards. Uh, it came back up on uh, gay Twitter. Uh, they put it back up there. And they're like, you know, Kevin Hart is a problem. Uh, then people, were, Kevin Hart was like, I probably apologize for this. What else do you want me to do? And then some people on gay Twitter, I wouldn't say all of them, you know, some people on there uh, said that, you know, well, you got to do more for the for the gay community, you know, so I need to see you out there doing programs, stuff like that. And then it became a question of, well, how did someone, um, how did someone, uh, uh, you know, have redemption. You know, what is the role to redemption if you do something wrong? For a tweet, you can't do more than just apologize. A tweet from 2011 that was almost 10 years ago, you it's not your job to restructure a community or to completely um, change the world because of a tweet, if you ask me, because you should, uh, you should be able to seek redemption for as long as you didn't do something, like as long as you're not R. Kelly, but uh, a tweet, an apology should be enough. For 2011, when uh, so many people were tweeting like that. Yeah. Uh, and then next was like James Gunn. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you don't know who James Gunn is, he's the director of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 1 and 2. Some of the most high grossing Marvel movies that came out. Um, very good series. Um, James Gunn used to be a shock jock, right? So mm -hmm. a shock jock, back in the day on Twitter, people who tweeted really heinous things, and then they kind of got uh, credit for it. You know, mm -hmm. so what was the thing that he tweeted again? Uh, he he uh, made an unflattering joke about people with AIDS, um, and James Gunn is, he has been uh, since fired from Disney and is no, no longer working on any Marvel pro projects in the future because of these old tweets from 2008. Yeah, and then it was crazy because so he got canceled, and then, Mar and then the Disney came out and were like, you know, maybe we'll rehire you. You know, so like it was as if as if Disney looked at the numbers and like, well, if someone else directs this movie besides James Gunn, you know, <laughs> it won't do as well. So maybe we got to rehire James Gunn, you know, uh, because one of the main characters from the movie w all decided to walk away because he fired James Gunn, you know, because he was like, this this cancel culture is out of is out of is, is outrageous, mm -hmm. and um, I stand by James Gunn, you know, and it was the main character from the show, and therefore Disney kind of had to back off and reassess things, you know. But then that comes the question of, you know, um, what exactly should corporations do when people decide to cancel somebody? You know, is it that, is there something that they, should they listen to what, what uh, Twitter has to say? You know, how big does the outcry need to be before they need to act, you know? For me, Twitter or what you tweeted in the past should not be enough to make you, unless you tweeted the most racist, heinous, homophobic, dirty thing in the world that just straight up, I want to, like hurt these people or something along those lines, then you your tw your tweets from ten years ago should not make you lose your job because my tweets from ten years ago, <laughs> let me tell you, no, <laughs> if that no, they were. Ho I wasn't saying things that James Gunn were saying, but I was thinking way differently than I would think now. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, my tweets, you, you've done a deep dive on my Instagram. Oh, uh, the deepest dive. <laughs> my pictures from back in the day, uh, my style was not it. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, you know, uh, looking, trying to look fly, was not doing it correctly, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. you know, what is, you know, I think we have to realize that the times change and people change along with mm -hmm. it. So, like, Pete Davidson is a comedian on SNL, right? Mm -hmm. So, he was considered to be canceled because he made a joke about, uh, David Crenshaw, who's represent a congressional representative from where I live in Houston, uh, he made a joke about his eye patch. He's a former Navy SEAL. He lost his eye 
I think when IMD Explosion, right? Mm -hmm. And he made a joke about it. And then David Crenshaw came on the show the next week after all of right wing Twitter said he's uh, Pete Davidson be canceled. David Crenshaw came on there and then he started making fun of uh, Pete Davidson and Pete Davidson made fun of himself. And like from a veteran standpoint, right? I have jokes about my back that are hilarious because my back got messed up when I was in Afghanistan. I can no longer stand up straight. Uh, like an old man, if I were to bend over and tie my shoe, I may not get back up, right? Hilarious jokes about mm -hmm. myself, you know, and the veterans do that. We make fun of ourselves. And so I don't see anything wrong with what Pete Davidson did. And that's what David Crenshaw went on there and was like, hey, we can make fun of each other. It's okay. It shouldn't be such a bad thing, you know? And then Pete Davidson has some other uh, flattering jokes about Ariana Grande. Oh, yes. Um, he said some explicit things involving Ariana Grande and his sexual life and uh, his father, um, which were just jokes at the end of the day. He is a comedian, and he's going to tell bad jokes some, sometimes. He even made a joke uh, before he was with Ariana Grande uh, saying that uh, he's not as popular as her because his shows have never been blown up. Sure, it's not in the best taste, but it's still not out of the realm of possibility for a comedian. It's not so abhorrent that you need to f f fill his inbox with hate and tell him to kill himself the way Ariana Grande stands did. Yeah, and then Pete Davidson has, has a long track history of having mental health issues, yeah. you know. And then they, we, talk, we start talking about comedians and their past jokes, right? Mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy Raw uh, is really funny, but also really problematic. Mm -hmm. You know, the jokes that Richard Pryor used to tell, are really problematic. You and know. why are we holding these comedians of today, uh, of the past, to the same standards of today? When in, to, in the 2000s, you could say whatever you wanted, but as long as it provided laughs and gave you money. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not saying like deplorable, horrible, heinous things, but not being politically correct is not enough to ruin your career, yeah. in my opinion. And so like the best of the comedians, like uh, David Chappelle, right? Mm -hmm. Every now and then he'll say things that make you be like, can I laugh at that? You know, but then he'll actually like, you know, dissect it and think about it. I think comedy, um, as one of the great comedians says, is, like, is an avenue for us to talk about things that we don't normally talk about and dissect it through laughter, you know, well, let's mm -hmm. talk about this, let's talk about the funny aspects of it, you know, because, uh, and I think that's, that's really important, you know, so I think, uh, you know, uh, canceling David, uh, Pete Davidson over that was not necessary. Then Ari Grande also got canceled. Oh. Ariana Grande gets canceled every third Tuesday. <laughs> uh, she's been canceled for uh, tanning or appearing dark. She's Italian, so sometimes she gets a little dark. People are saying she's trying to uh, do blackface. People are trying to. People have said in the past she's done uh, black sins. People have said a multitude of things about what Ariana Grande can and cannot do. And who are they to really decide, honestly? Because she's never outwardly said anything deplorable. People even tried to cancel Ariana Grande for dating Pete Davidson. It literally does not make any sense. Yeah, so like, I think, um, you know, as we you know, really address, you know, what cancel culture is as mm -hmm. a total, right? I think there's questions about like, you know, uh, can you be too popular, like we said, you know? Yeah. Um, what are the correct criteria, you mm -hmm. know? And then what if, you know, um, you know what is, how does someone get a role back to redemption, you know? Because, like, Chris Brown. Uh, oh, my <laughs> gosh. Chris Brown has done multiple acts of things that, you Multiple know, acts. That we consider to be heinous, right? Yes. But uh, black Twitter will still stand Chris Brown mm -hmm. um, because we still like his music and we grew up with him, right? And, you know, so beating Rihanna was not enough. Uh, Stalking uh, yeah. Karuchi was not enough. You know, and um, then... Felony assault charges, not enough. Yeah, and then... Uh, recently in France, uh, he was falsely accused of sexual assault, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "Look at this! This is signs shows that people are lying on Chris Brown." And this reason why he shouldn't be canceled, you know. Oh my God! When there are literal pictures of Chris Brown choking women, but that's none of my business. <laughs> black Twitter. <laughs> yeah, so I think you should have to hold people to a standard. You know what exactly? Are we? Because like you know, if we took a stance, right? So my stance is that I think cancel culture. Um, you know, I question. You know. Can it go too far? You know, and I question what should be our, you know, what should be, what should, what, what, at what point should companies have to respond to what we have to say? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, I think, you know, Twitter is a place where everyone has a platform, everyone has a voice. You know, and then because of the way Twitter works, you know, things that are dumb can be amplified. You mm -hmm. know, you know how many times I see on my timeline, black, the black man is God because people want to amplify mm -hmm. that dumb stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, but like, so let's 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 understand that you know. If there's a deep conversation about it, mm. and there's actual heinous acts that should lead to criminal charges, I think we should cancel. You know, people should be canceled. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
But if it's, you know, if it's things that someone can, you know, someone has that done. That you could personally slip up by saying. Yeah. Uh, making a bad joke. I make a lot of bad jokes. I do it a lot. Um, is that enough to cancel you? You haven't said anything deplorable. You just maybe didn't speak as politically correct as you could have. Is that really enough to cancel somebody? I don't think cancel culture is a bad thing, though. I think it's important that we're able to uh, make sure people are held accountable to their actions. I think it's important that uh, celebrities or public figures are actually thinking about what they say for once in their lives. But I do think sometimes we just cancel people that we just internally, honestly, just don't like from the start and just make up any reason and try to get people on board with that. Yeah, and I think in the end, you know, um, we should think before you should we should think before we decide who we should cancel, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you're messing with people's paycheck, and that's really important, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I think you know, as we go forward, there should be you know more conversations about this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's all we have for you guys today on this episode of Topicality. Once again, I am Nishan. I'm Antonio Brown. And you're canceled. <laughs>